we're supposed to die before our kids. It's a tragedy that they're both gone. No, I'm not do anything to change it. Three people are dead after an apparent double homicide suicide. Tonight, we hear from family of the victims as they come to grips with their loss, plus a disturbing case of animal abuse. I genuinely believe that there will come a time if he is let out that he will hurt somebody. He has hurt people, um, not just animals, he's hurt people. A man now behind bars for the crimes. Now Laurel residents who had their cats stolen and killed are speaking out and pushing for change. And changing hands, the Exxon Mobil refinery in Lockwood about to have a new owner. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesiger. We begin with an announcement that a Houston-based company has purchased the Exxon Mobil refinery in Lockwood. Par Pacific saying it's agreed to purchase the refinery and related assets for just over $300 million. Q2's David J has more on what it means for the refinery and its employees. With the sale of the refinery, the name on the sign will change. Also, they'll change the name of Exxon Mobil Road. They're not sure if that's going to be Park Pacific or some other name. And on the inside, all the more than 300 employees will keep their jobs. Park Pacific Holdings based in Houston and Exxon Mobil announced the sale of the refinery for $310 million. It's a great opportunity for the refinery. It's a great opportunity for the employees with Par Pacific. Certainly a mix of emotions. Uh, having been in all the forums today, uh, there is a mixture of excitement and optimism. Kim Jacob, Exxon Mobil's refinery manager in Lockwood, says Par Pacific will offer jobs to all of the approximately 340 employees. That includes the refinery employees as well as some of our midstream employees that work at terminals here in Billings and across Montana and eastern Washington. Exxon Mobil owns eight refineries in North America and this is the only one in this region. Billings is the only Exxon Mobil refinery that's in the Pacific Northwest and with Par Pacific, uh, their refinery in Tacoma, Washington and Newcastle, Wyoming, we are the perfect complement and lots of opportunities for integration with those existing sites. The sale also includes Exxon Mobil's silver tip pipeline for light crude and its share of the Yellowstone distribution pipeline. It's a pipeline that originates here in Billings and essentially follows I-90 all the way out into eastern Washington. Both companies say the sale is expected to close during the second quarter of 2023. Heritage Exxon uh, owned and built in and started up in 1949. So this is, this is a significant change in the history of the refinery and we're very excited for it. In Lockwood, David J, MTN News. We know much more tonight about an apparent double homicide and suicide that we first told you about as breaking news last night at 10. Police say they were called to Murphy Avenue on Billings South Side after a report of shots fired. They found a 39-year-old man deceased from what appeared to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound and the bodies of an 11-year-old boy and a 38-year-old woman shot to death. Police say they had not been called to that house before. But members of the victim's family told our Charlie Kleps they had noticed some problems. Last night at 8.30, three people were found dead inside their home just down the street from where I'm standing. It's an unimaginable tragedy, but it's now the nightmare that Russell Gauze and his family are living with as they are only left with their loved one's memories. They were the most <laughs> pre precious kids I know. And they didn't have to go this way. In a tragic turn of events, William Darling, Melissa Darling, and their son, William Darling Jr., passed away Wednesday evening. For Russell Gauze, the father of Melissa and grandfather of William Jr., it's his worst nightmare coming true. We're supposed to die before our kids. It's a tragedy that they're both gone now. I'd do anything to change it. The family says they knew there were problems, but never could have imagined it would get to this extent. We still loved him, no matter what. He hasn't been working for the last 10 years, so I think everything just gathered on him. She mentioned to her two days ago that she was talking about leaving him. So I'm wondering if she brought it up and this is how it escalated. While Melissa and her older sister April had grown apart in the past couple of years, she says their love was unconditional. I still love her, would do anything for her. 
and I'm just going to remember all the fun times we had. William Darling Jr. was a fourth grader at Newman Elementary School. The family says he was loved by all of his classmates and teachers. He was my buddy. I just wish it didn't happen to them. It's a catastrophe that has left this family broken and holding on to their memory. It's still a nightmare. And I'm going to miss her. I wish I could talk to her one more time. In Billings, Charlie Claps, MTN News. Last night, we told you that 35-year-old Sean Robinson of Laurel was sentenced for the killing of a dozen cats. Killings that prosecutors say were methodically planned. Tonight, our Kelsey Marison talks with pet owners who lost their cats. And while they're happy with the sentence, they believe more needs to be done. This is one of the Laurel neighborhoods where Sean Robinson committed those crimes in the spring of 2021. Crimes that he will now serve 10 years in the Department of Corrections for, two years for each charge, followed by an additional 10 years in prison for unrelated drug charges. Sean was charged with five cats, and everybody knows that was just a drop in the bucket for the number of cats that he killed. He killed more than five just in this subdivision of my neighbors. Laurel families reported having their cats mysteriously vanishing for months, and it wasn't until an unrelated drug search warrant was served that authorities discovered evidence of animal cruelty on the Laurel property. I printed flyers. We posted them all over. My kids went door to door, talked to all of our neighbors. Nobody had seen him. The Bausch's family cat, Hobo, disappeared from their yard in the spring of 2021. Bausch says she was already suspicious of Robinson after seeing a post about him on Facebook, but had no idea he lived just down the road from her. The neighbor gal that lives next door, she watched him at the ditch and she said it, did, it didn't occur to her at the time what she was watching, but after the fact, she realized what she was watching was something very violent. Robinson admitted to stealing and strangling the Bausch's cat before dumping the body near an irrigation ditch. And this was more than just a cat to the Bausch's. Hobo was family. Mindy's five children were heartbroken. They were like, I bet he was so scared. I bet he thought he'd done something wrong. Uh, I wonder if he knew that we loved him. I wonder if he knew he was a good boy. The Bausches were far from the only victims. He got us in a vulnerable moment, you know, when we had to get rid of them. Sharon Luloff was already dealing with tragedy, losing her mother and stepfather nine days apart in 2021 and was tasked with cleaning out the home. Her mother had two elderly cats that needed a home and Robinson contacted her saying he would take them in. He looked me straight in the eye and said, no, I'm, I, I don't have a good home. According to court records, Robinson states he suffers from PTSD and was abused as a child, so he started killing cats instead of killing people. While victims are happy Robinson was given the maximum sentencing for his crimes, they want the laws changed so these crimes carry a heavier punishment. He's gonna, he's, he got a two-year sentence for killing Hobo. It's just unfortunate that Hobo's life is only worth two years. In Laurel, Kelsey Marison, MTN News. The official winter outlook from the National Weather Service came out for the winter months of December, January, February. We're leaning towards a wetter than average winter. The signal is a little bit stronger, as you can see, in central and western Montana and through portions of northern Wyoming, we could lean that way. And also a colder than average lean to this, especially as we look across the northern portion of the state. Things definitely turning wetter and colder for the weekend. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. The well, farmers and ranchers are the heart and soul of Montana. I caught up with one Broadview farmer who is not only doing her part to keep us fed, but also rising to some unexpected challenges in the process. It's tonight's Positively Montana. Playing in the dirt and I don't know, the fresh air. There's just so much. I love watching crops grow. I love watching grass grow. I'm kind of a nature person. I saved the last pass for you. Getting behind the wheel of this big tractor suits Denise Conover just fine. It's something she enjoys. There it shows me where I'm at. I'm taking along with her on this fine fall day. Right now the focus is on getting the winter wheat in the ground before the snow starts flying again. We do everything we can, but it's still up to Mother Nature to bring that um, to fruition. Denise and her two sons grow wheat, malt barley, and sunflowers on this family farm just outside of Broadview. She says it was a good year for the crops, but farming can still be unpredictable. I know everybody goes, oh, $9 wheat, you guys must really be making a lot of money. And 
you know, at the end of the day, when you've got fertilizer that has doubled in the last year, and everything's up, fuel prices are up. While Denise has been around farming and ranching her whole life, life on this farm took a turn no one could have expected. We took one person, the main person, out of our operation, and that was tough. In February of 2020, her husband Brett was killed when a drunk driver in Arizona hit them from behind going over 100 miles an hour. You never think you're going to be one of those people that get affected by that. and. Your life changes in an instant. So she's taken a more active role in helping with the hard work around the farm, as well as still finding time to serve on the Montana Wheat and Barley Board and the U.S. Wheat Board, which helps promote food security worldwide. She saw that firsthand with a visit to a refugee camp in Africa. It had 170,000 people wow. live there with their children, grandchildren. And we got to see and hear the voices of some of the most vulnerable people on the planet. And I think that it sums it up. Um, this is a picture of our wheat, and it's got uh, the USA on it. So it makes you pretty proud when you see those. It's all part of a commitment to not only help feed those here, but all over the world. It, it gets hard, but it's, it's also a lot of work. But I think it, it's very beneficial. You've got to love it to do it. Ahead on the MTN News at 10 here on Q2, Billings New Medical School already starting to take shape. Diane Parker joins us with an update. And playoffs are just around the corner for high school football teams making a couple contests we're covering tonight of special significance. The highlights coming up a little later in sports. The MTN 10 o'clock news continues right after this.